So you've been working really hard on your music and now it's ready to be sent out to a uh, record label. Well, in this video, I go over five ways that you can improve your chances of getting signed by a record label coming up next. What up guys, my end here with another music production video. So in this channel, you're going to find tips, tricks, and salty reviews of tools to help you in the music creation process. So in this video, I'm going to go over five tips on how to send your demos out and have a better success rate of getting your tracks picked from the bunch. If you're new to my channel, hit the bell, click subscribe so you can get my future videos. So you're wondering, how do you know this stuff? Well, I used to perform as A&R for a couple of record labels and I also have over a hundred releases out and I kind of like understand how, how it works. So I'm going to go based on the information that I have from working as A&R uh, before in those record labels and the stuff that we looked at. I'm not going to go over like every single detail but I'm going to give you like five tips that are going to make it better for you guys when you're sending out your demos. All right. Number uno, research. Research the record label that you want to send your demos to. Make sure that the sound, it's similar to what they're putting out and uh, that you're hitting what they're looking for in their tracks. So that said, uh, what you should do is go to Beatport or wherever you buy your music and then um, just check on their catalog and see what what their tracks sound like. What What is the sound of the record label? Every record label has th their own sound. So just make sure that you hit on that um, first. Then also you might think that you have, oh, the sound down, but let's be honest. Uh, when we're writing our own music, we, we like focus on our own sound and we think that it sounds like that record label, but sometimes it doesn't. And uh, what I usually do is I send uh, my music out to a couple of friends that I know that I trust uh, with my music. And, um, and yeah, so, so, and then tell me, okay, yeah, maybe this is not for uh, Bedrock. Maybe you want to try like uh, a more organic, uh, like record label, like All Day I Dream or, or record labels like that. And then I, I go based off of that. Uh, if you hear some snoring, here's my bulldog again they have that problem so yeah tip number two get social so what do i mean about getting social so go into the record labels uh, social media and start supporting the record label start liking start commenting you know uh, as a and r people we're involved in in social media as well you know we get to see uh, like that interaction and if you have a good branding of yourself as an artist you know all that information is going to come in right um, so let's say that um, my good friend Ben is going to put a, a, a record out in let's say let's say tool room right which he is so if I wanted to get in tool room there's I would support him even though he's my friend and I support him anyways but uh, I would start commenting, supporting, you know, like liking other comments, just uh, helping out with the social media part of things, you know, showing that I care about the community that they're building. And then when they get emails from me with my own branding, that's going to make it easier to stand out. You know, it's something that's going to like uh, help in that process. Uh, I, I, I read a book the other day, well, not a part of a book the other day that, um, uh, touched on uh, how sales have changed in the last five years with social media and uh, so you know at the end of the day you're selling your product you're selling your tracks you want to get them signed right support them support the community uh, let them know that you know you're there to support that you mean business and that you're happy to help right um, so you you need about 16 to 18 touches for people to start noticing you, uh, to start giving you the time of day. So if you're active in social media, it's, it's going to translate later when you start sending your demos out. Number three, this one's really important. Sometimes, you know, like um, we forget that we only have uh, like one chance, right? In, in, in many situations, we only have ch one chance to impress people. So this one is send your music mixed and mastered send the best product that you can send out to the record labels right it's going to take 
is going to bring that sense of professionalism when an A and R uh, guy or girl open up the the email and uh, they they hear oh my gosh like they they master the track it's it's really well mixed you know like they're taking care of their art they're taking care of of, of their product so that goes a long 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 way um, some people are worried that oh but if I send a track master what does it take for them to not put it out as their own I mean to be honest that's a risk that you're going to have to take if you have your uh, files and you have everything how you worked your track then it's easy to tell people hey that's my track you know like uh, and, and point them out and like uh, let them know that they, they they did that sometimes they might do it as a mistake sometimes they might do it on purpose and if it's a big artist who puts your track out um, at, with their own name that tells you that your track was that good so that's also awesome tip number four do not I mean do not send your demos out to 20 different labels with the same link to SoundCloud where they can see that oh like this track has had like 21 plays all right because here is the thing labels want exclusivity when you're sending your demos out they want to know that they are the first ones to get your track right that they are the first ones that get dibs on that track if, if they like the track okay I know it's uh, it's time-consuming to upload like the same track like five different times or ten different times or like 20 different times depending on how many like uh, demos you're sending out but it's worth it you know like it gives you one it lets you know that they played your track that your demo was a success on reaching the ears that needed to reach it right but the other thing it, it it gives them that like certainty like oh wow like this is cool you know like he did not send it to anyone else also right do not send 20 tracks at a time so this is like 4.5 like tip 4.5 bonus uh so don't send like 20 tracks send your best three tracks right remember like you're not the only one sending demos out you are not the only one that they had time for to go over 20 tracks and uh, yeah so usually I, I heard this from uh, Richie Houghton that if after six seconds he doesn't like the vibe of the track he just like doesn't even like consider it for his record label this was in the past for minus uh, his record label but uh, so that said you know just just take that into account you know maybe uh, I think that in SoundCloud also with YouTube and like some other platforms you can actually set the the time code to start at a certain part of the track so what I, I usually do is I send them you know like what I consider to be like the best best part of the track and then you know they can start it from there and they can listen to the group if you start your track from minute zero I mean guys like if you're writing electronic music like the first 32 bars is for the DJs right so like just keep that into account send your tracks with a timestamp of where you want the track to start number five email your email header right do your research how they like to receive demos they have like most of the record labels either on their websites or on their social media have a demo policy Right, what they expect to receive when you're once you're sending a demo out. Uh, so the header of your email, your subject, that has to have all the data about your own like release, so they know what they're looking at. What I do, you know, when I send demos out, is I write the name of the track. I write, you know, like the like my like my like artist name then i write the the gender genre sorry genre the the, the track is is written on and also the bpm so they know right uh right of bat what what is that track about right uh i just don't send like oh like demos by whatever because let's face it like if they have an inbox of like 200 emails and then you're just like skimming through they are going to pick the ones that stand out the most so like your subject line has to be on point and I will write um, some uh, 
bullet points in the description on like what you should add, right? Uh, number two, what you're adding on your email, right? What's the body of your email? Don't write an entire paragraph explaining, you know, yourself, what makes you an artist and all this other stuff. Just make a quick introduction. Also, how you refer to them, it's key, okay? Here is why. You don't know them. So don't start like, hey, bro, like, here's a demo. Like, I don't call bro or like, you know, like, like things like that to, to people that I don't know, right? It's a business transaction. You're trying to make the best impression, right? So second, just write a little bit about yourself, then write your music and explain a little bit about your track process after you like put the links to the tracks. Make sure that the links are playable after they click on them once. Then at the bottom, what I would write, right, is just like, these are the record labels that I've released on on the past. So I put like probably like, the best five record labels that I've released on, on the, in the past and that kind of like relate to their sound just so like uh, they can go and check out that catalog. Also, I would add, you know, social media because that's important. Um, so with social media, just make sure you you put like one or two platforms. I would put the platform that you're more active on. Uh, for me right now, it's Instagram. So I, I usually just put my Instagram there. Uh, but then I also put a link to uh, my um, uh, my beatport. Uh, there's like beatport stats and like all this other stuff that you can put on. I mean, it might be a good practice just so they can see if you have released in the top 10, top 100s, and all this other stuff and how many releases you have done, right? Uh, so they can hear your music and so they can hear what you're about. Also for like the social media, I mean, let's face it, um, it's it's kind of like uh, kind of like your 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 social proof that you're doing things right and that you're a professional and that you're taking your music seriously. It's kind of like the same thing as uh, um, like sending your music mastered. Um, I know it's sad, you know, that they like people need social proof in order to like sign you as an artist, but let's face it. Uh, I mean, if they're running a record label nowadays with how everything has changed, they're looking to make a profit when they're putting your music out. Uh, that said, you're wondering, oh, so, but why don't I just release my music by myself? Now there's like different platforms that allow me to do that. That's for another video uh, because there's some pros and cons in doing that. And now we'll go over that once I make that other video explaining my thought process on that. So those are like my five tips. If you have other things that you're doing when you're sending your demos and you're finding success, please comment on the on the comments below. Let me know. Also, if you want me to like have a listen to your tracks and tell you which label uh, your track might fit at, uh, yeah, just do it. Just leave the link below and I would love to have a listen.